Optimization of upper gastrointestinal endoscopy, value of real-time gastric juice analysis. Conventional EGDS can be used to detect macroscopic abnormalities, but it has several limitations in identifying microscopic lesions. Unfortunately, microscopic lesions are relatively frequent in patients undergoing upper endoscopy, and often they represent preneoplastic conditions. Hence, the need for biopsies and histological evaluation. Performing gastric biopsies, however, for all these reasons, does not ensure a total protection from potential diagnostic commission errors. In addition, in patients with abnormal or mild endoscopic findings, endoscopist only takes a few enteral samples or do not perform biopsies at all. Consequently, omission errors may increase. To this limitation, however, performing numerous biopsies in different stomach areas and using additional stains in all patients are not routine practice right now. Moreover, the issue becomes even more intriguing to consider that many patients undergoing a endoscopy are then found to be free of histological lesions. A possible solution to the impasse could be the determination of gastric health during the endoscopy. In this way, the endoscopist could be alerted about the presence of abnormalities in the stomach at the time of the examination and select the most appropriate operative diagnostic approach for each patient. A possible method to determine gastric health could be the analysis of gastric juice. Two reliable indicators could be the pH and the ammonium concentration. The former reflects the gastric capability to produce acid and the latter, the presence of H. pylori infection, and indirect death of gastritis. Aim of our study was to determine the potential contribution of real-time gastric juice analysis to the upper gastrointestinal endoscopy, with particular regard to the efficiency of diagnosis and the optimization of resources. This is a retrospective analysis of a prospective cohort of 216 patients referred for diagnostic upper endoscopy. These patients were not taking antisecretory drugs in the two weeks before the examination. The parameters evaluated were endoscopic pattern, H. pylori infection, real-time gastric juice analysis, and histologic feature. As to histology, it was performed by taking two enteral and two fundic biopsies from each patient and staining them with hematoxylineosin and immunohistochemical stain. The parameters evaluated were H. pylori colonization, glandular atrophy, intestinal metaplasia, ECL cells, and G cells. As to real-time gastric juice analysis, it was performed by using EndoFaster, an innovative device that, interposing between the endoscope and the, and the suction system, performs an ultra-fast analysis of and by evaluating the pH and the ammonium concentration, in real time allows the detection of the hypochloritic condition and the H. pylori infection. Then, taking all the data from endoscopic information, real-time gastric juice analysis and histologic evaluation, we simulated six different diagnostic strategies, each including only part of the overall investigations employed. Three of these strategies are based on routinarian endoscopic practice while the other three are based on real-time gastric juice analysis. Specific Strategy 1 contemplated only the endoscopic information. Strategy 2 contemplating both the endoscopic information and the histology from the enteral mucosa. Strategy 3 considered the endoscopic information and the histology from both the enteral and oxyntic mucosa. Strategy 4, 5 and 6 are based on real-time gastric juice analysis, so they considered only in hypochloridic patients the endoscopic feature and histology with biopsies only in the entrum in strategy 4, with biopsies both in the entrum and in the, in the oxygenic mucosa in strategy 5, and as the previous, but performing also immunohistochemical techniques in strategy 6. Then, taking the complete histological evaluation as a gold standard, we determine the diagnostic performance of each strategy by evaluating how many pathological conditions identified on histology would have been diagnosed by each strategy. Results. On the table, 
there are the individual results of the strategies and on the bottom row there's the total pathological conditions identified. Now let's go to the details. On the basis of gastric juice pH, 25% of patients resulted to be hypochloridics, while 75% were normochloridics. The rate of gastric pathological condition was low in normochloridic patients, only 15%, while most of the lesions, so 85%, were in hypochloridics. A strong correlation was found between the mucosal lesions and the pH value. As you can see, the rate of patients with one or more histological lesions increased proportionately at increasing pH values. Another significant correlation was found between the ammonium concentration and the H. pylori infection. Nearly all the infected patients were distributed above the cutoff point of 61 ppm of ammonium concentration. All endofaster reported a good diagnostic rate for H. pylori. Both sensitivity and specificity were more than 90%. Pathological conditions were identified by each strategy. Here are the results. Diagnostic strategies based on real-time gastric juice analysis yielded detection rates comparable or even higher than those of strategies involving biopsies for all patients but without gastric juice analysis. And this despite the fourfold lower number of biopsies performed. Conclusions. EGDS alone is inadequate for a complete evaluation of the gastric mucosal status. Most microscopic lesions are correlated with hypoacidity and can be predicted by gastric juice analysis. H. pylori infection can be predicted in real time by a simple and automated analysis of gastric juice. Prediction of pathological conditions at the time of endoscopy allows the endoscopist to plan the most appropriate diagnostic approach for each patient, such as taking biopsies from the oxyntic mucosa, alerting the pathologist, ordering specific blood tests, or requiring additional stains. It might be worth noting that hypochloridia is not only correlated with gastric malignancy, but also with a lot of other conditions that are of considerable clinical pathological importance and not easily detectable. Thank you for your attention.